at four and seven on the season. We are ready to get this one underway. T.J. Holyfield jumping for the Red Raiders, who will control. And Chris in the starting lineup after an absence of four games for the Red Raiders is Jemias Ramsey. Christmas comes early. Yeah. For this basketball program. Yeah, Jemias has been missing since November the 28th, Thanksgiving night. He went down versus uh, University of Iowa and began a three game losing streak for the Red Raiders. They've since bounced back, bounced back with a couple of wins in a row. And nice to see him back. Uh, in action for Texas Tech. Hamstring injury had kept him out of the lineup and uh, had a lot of Red Raider fans wondering when Jemias would return. And today is the day Red Raiders had thrown that ball inside and a foul on Jordan Jackson of the Vaqueros. Here's Terrence Shannon on the drive inbound play and the Red Raiders are on the board. Yeah, just drove uh, drove left right there. He is left handed. A little inbounds play, and that's big for Jordan Jackson to pick up that first one early on. He is the guy that makes him go on offense. Leslie Varner, Javon Levi, Connor Raines, Jordan Jackson, and Anthony Bratton for the visiting UT Rio Grande Valley Vaqueros. This is Jackson defended by Jemias Ramsey. Jordan airball on his first attempt. Red Raiders are going to run. Jordan uh, Jordan Jackson right there kind of forced that one up again. He will hunt his shot often, but uh, the Red Raiders uh, certainly need to focus. And there's an early turnover right there by T.J. Holyfield trying to do a little bit too much. Got in the lane. Had nowhere to go with the ball. Red Raiders own the early advantage. Levi Varner defended by Davide Moretti. Big size mismatch in favor of the Vaqueros Jackson again to drive Bratton in the pass stolen this is Davide Moretti going to give it up to Shannon who wasn't quite ready for that ball that's just part of a uh, young team right there Mr. Harris uh, again this team leads the Big 12 in assists per game about 17 18 a game but uh, oftentimes maybe make uh, too many passes and you end up with an empty possession right there by the way, in the absence of Jemias Ramsey, Chris Clark, Terrence Shannon, Davide Moretti, and Tyler Edwards all upping their average to make up for those 17 lost points per game. Chris Clark's already headed to the scores table, but uh, yeah, nobody's benefited. And I, benefit is the wrong word, but Chris Clark and TJ Shannon really have emerged. You know, and, and needed to uh, for this basketball team in the absence. And that's uh, that's another charge right there, Mr. Harris, for T.J. Shannon. That's his, what, 13th on the season. Red Raiders keep track of that clearly the way they like to play defense. And Terrence Shannon drawing his 13th charging foul of the season. He's the leader in the clubhouse right now for the Red Raiders. Here's Jemias Ramsey. And Ramsey going to take a three back, and that's off the back iron. Ramsey, the Red Raiders' leading scorer at the time of his injury, and still the Red Raiders' leading scorer. More than 17 a ball game, but he's been out for the past four. Reigns on the wing, going to drive against Moretti, but throw that across the court into the corner. Shot there by Quentin Johnson, who's in the ball game for the... Vaqueros is not good. Chris Clark on for the Red Raiders. And back to that point you were making a moment ago, Chris. The Red Raiders, Davide Moretti on that pass back to T.J. Shannon that went out of bounds. Red Raiders sometimes are just too unselfish. There's Tyler Edwards with the jumper. And you like seeing Tyler Edwards start to hunt his shot. And this is the Vaqueros game up the floor in a hurry. Nearly three minutes into this one, Red Raiders going to run again. There's Tobias Ramsey. Hamstring looks pretty good right now. He's back, folks. <laughs> he is back, playing above the rim. Wow. Wow. Tyler Edwards with the assist, and Jemias finishing. Here's Jordan Jackson. Got the three to go. The Rio Grande Valley. He was 0 for 2 in this matchup a year ago right here in Lubbock. But early on gets a three-pointer. First points of the game for 
the Vaqueros, and now Chris Clark, who can do a little bit of everything for the Red Raiders. Well, scores. that's a great, great feed right there at the elbow, and then he just his dribble handoff. He just comes right off of the elbow layup, and there's no help defense right there for the Vaqueros, and a nice easy layup for Chris Clark. Red Raider fans stood for nearly four minutes in this ball game at the start until the opponent had scored a foul called on T.J. Holyfield there as Javon Levi is just trying to dribble across court take another look at the Jemias Ramsey play and it's all set up because Jemias gives the ball up very early so he can get it back if, if you wait and try to create a two on one uh, sometimes you can get in a bit of a you know a bind there but he gives it up early gets it right back textbook force the defender to make a decision Avery Benson's in the ball game now for the Red Raiders. Quentin Johnson. Here's Chris Freeman, who is, well, that's not Freeman, that was Sean Ray, rather, back uh, on the court for UTRGV. Nearly a shot clock violation. Red Raiders have a five point advantage here early. Shannon closely defended by Quentin Johnson and going to. Get a charging call on him. Yeah, there's a pass to be had right there by to Tyler Edwards. If TJ looks up, try to force it a little bit. Red Raiders do lead in the early going, 8-3 over UT RGV. Just looked over there. quick about Jordan but when I say his mom Cheryl Swoops is one of the greatest basketball players of all time you can go ahead and go to her banner just so I can get out of the way down here no sense of urgency here Holidays, everybody. Red Raiders out in front early, 8-3. John Harris along with Chris Level and Taylor Peters is across the way. Yeah, John and Chris, you talked a little bit earlier about Jordan Jackson. He averages 15 points a game. He's the leading scorer for the UT Rio Grande Valley team, and he's really important to their offensive efficiency. But you can see that he wears number 22. It's the same jersey number that his mom wore when she played basketball here for the Lady Raiders. Cheryl Swoops is regarded as one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Her retired jersey still hangs in the rafters here at United Supermarkets Arena after the most decorated and impressive careers in all of college basketball. The All-American led the Lady Raiders to the 1993 National Championship her senior year where she set a record with 47 points. Guys, she really truly was one of the greatest of all time and of course had gone to have a really successful professional career as well as in the Olympics. Taylor, you're exactly right. Cheryl Swoops was uh, way ahead of her time. Chris Clark, a do-it-all guy for the Red Raiders, so can't get the bucket to go in the Vaqueros run. Here's Javon Levi. Oche Dibiamaka three-pointer won't go in a fight underneath, and 
Chris Clark does a lot of things for this team, Chris. Well, he just he missed the bunny a second ago, but he just can get to the basket. You just see him doing it right there. He's just such a big body. A bit of an ill-advised pass right there, but he just he can kind of bully his way to the basket. He's such a mismatch problem. Kind of an outside the box positionless player. You're right, does so many things. Red Raiders save that ball back in bounds, but now five on the shot clock. Davide Moretti trying to find a place underneath. Got it to Avery Benson, and his close shot doesn't go, but Terrence Shannon to follow. TJ with the, the putback. How did that ball not go in for Avery Benson right there? In and out. Don't see the layup opportunities go in and out like that, more like jumpers. Quentin Johnson's jumper does go though and Vaqueros narrow the Red Raider lead to three and what coach Hill's team is doing they're spreading you out and it's it's taking away some of the help defense opportunities for the, the Texas Tech likes to utilize and they just have a five out set and it's just kind of one on one basketball so uh, jump shots if they go in or just kind of one on one basketball. Yeah, there's, there's Chris Clark right there I mean again. Uh, as you see, just fills up a stat sheet. You know, when, when Chris Beer was trying to get Chris Clark to come here and talking to him about how he fit in, they, they talked a lot about we, we don't we don't see you as this or that. We see you as a little bit of everything, and he's truly a positionless guy. Very very unique player. He's gotten a lot more playing time with that injury to Jamias Ramsey. Ramsey back today, and Chris coming in off the bench now for the Red Raiders, who lead by one. Look inside by Shannon. TJ Holyfield coming down the baseline to score. That's a really nice back cut by TJ Holyfield and a finish. And uh, you know, Chris Beard said it the other day. If, if TJ Holyfield doesn't play well, we can't be, we just simply cannot be the team we would like to be. Not, not that as he goes, you go, but I think you, you look at the upside of your basketball program and your team this year. If, if he plays well, you have, a, you have a really nice chance to contend for conference championship and, and, and pass that, but he's got to be a big part of that. Davide Moretti's pass stolen by Jordan Jackson off on his own and lost that ball, may or may not have lost it out of bounds. And that's, uh, he does. That's Jordan Jackson's game, though. You see the kind of the good and the bad right there. Great steal, but just a little out of control on the offensive end. Gets uh, sped up at times. And again, he, he can get his shot whenever he wants. Probably a little revved up, you know, today, senior year, playing uh, in the gym where you used to play, where you signed out of high school. Played 23 games as a Red Raider before leaving the program, going to Midland College, and then winding up with the Vaqueros of Texas Rio Grande Valley. Tyler Edwards in the corner, three doesn't go. Jackson had a chance, but Jamias Ramsey took that ball away. Now Shannon from that same corner, in and out. And that's nice crash right there on the backside by T.J. Holyfield. The second chance opportunity. We thought early on that Jackson might have picked up a foul, but Leslie Varner, big key to the Vaqueros with two fouls here in the first half. Red Raiders trying to inbound the ball quickly to Holyfield, who scored, but Marquise Pettigrew the lead official may have waved that off when they handed him the ball. Yeah, that's what Chris Beard is saying. You hand him the ball. He, he can inbound it. And it's exactly what the Red Raiders did, but took away a bucket. Yeah. Clark, the Big 12 preseason newcomer of the year. Red Raiders trying to go inside, and Chris Freeman may have reached over the top to bat that ball away. Just a hunch. As long as the Red Raiders score in this possession, Chris Beard will, will be okay with it. If not, I expect the officials to hear about it a little bit more. Here's Chris Clark trying to drive it inside against Chris Freeman. Didn't get it to go, and the Red Raiders do not score on that possession. And Beard is waiting on the sideline. D.B. Amaka to drive, cut off by Clark and throws it away. Threw it over the top of Chris Freeman and out of bounds. And we've got a timeout in Lubbock. Red Raiders owning a three-point advantage over UT Rio Grande Valley. You're watching Texas Tech TV here on Fox.
Red Raiders own a 12-9 advantage over the UTRGB Vaqueros. Chris Beard's guys have won 52 non-conference games in a row in this building. Chris coming up, one more non-conference game, Cal State Bakersfield, and then the Red Raiders get very busy in the Big 12. It's about to get very serious around here, certainly. The Big 12 uh, play gets going right up the first of the year, and then you're off to the races. Jordan Jackson caught T.J. Holyfield looking up the court, came in from behind and took that ball away. And UT Rio Grande Valley with an opportunity to tie the ball game. D.B. Amaka inside, back up top. Jordan Jackson, Isaiah Fontaine pulls within one. Well, when the help defense comes down, Jordan Jackson drives baseline right there. The help defense comes over. He just dumps it back for a nice uh, mid-range jumper right there. If you knock those down, you're in good shape. Wow, T.J. Shannon. If, if you continue to cut back door <laughs> and get good looks like that, Texas Tech will be just fine offensively as well. They're going to let that pressure uh, go at midcourt. They were trying to pressure the ball there, but the Red Raiders beat that, and then Shannon gets the huge dunk. That's D.B. Amaka scoring for UTRGV. Same spot as uh, the previous trip right yeah. there. T.J. Holyfield, nice look. Can't get it to go. Rio Grande Valley on the move. Jordan Jackson already with one three in the ball game, and he's got two now. Yeah, he had something to say to the tech bench right there after that uh, that made three. He was 0 for 2 in the game a year ago, already with two threes here in the first half. 16-14 Red Raiders. Holyfield short corner, back iron, not there. Fontaine rebounds, and Rio Grande Valley on the move. D.B. Amaka got around Jemias Ramsey in the corner, and that three is good. Quentin Johnson and the visiting Vaqueros building a lead. Yeah, getting hot from the perimeter, and again, not, not the kind of start that Chris Beard wanted from his team, and it's it's a little bit of everything. You're getting some good looks going to the basket. Uh, you know, 7 of 16 from the field right now, shooting 43%. However, the Vaquero is shooting 61%, three of five from behind the arc, and those previous two trips right there, you're on an uh, 8-0 run if you're the Vaqueros, and you've made six of your last six as they have taken the lead here up by five. Red Raiders have not made a three in the ball game, but they've got two big dunks, Jemias Ramsey and Terrence Shannon right there. That's a great look. You feed it right there to the high post and cut back door. Just had a hard time containing the Vaqueros, and uh, man, now you've got uh, Jordan Jackson uh, feeling it right now, clapping his hands. Davide Moretti of the Red Raiders has not taken a shot in the game to this point. More than 10 minutes in. Tyler Edwards, Moretti, Savrasov, Jamias Ramsey, and Chris Clark for Chris Beard's team. Eight on the shot clock. Edwards trying to drive. May have picked up a foul. Rob McClain. You know, and, and everything that Coach Hill's defense is based on is really gambling and denying and trapping. If you know, the longer they have to guard, the more of a bind that they can get in, uh, the longer the possession goes. Not if you're Texas Tech, you don't want every possession to milk the clock down, but. Chris Clark unable to inbound that ball, calling timeout before getting a five-second call. Did mention the Red Raiders have won 52 consecutive non-conference games at home. That streak began way back in 2013 and continues on today. The Red Raiders will be back in action a week from Sunday against Cal State Bakersfield. You can join the Lady Raiders of Texas Tech tomorrow, December 22nd, for their next home game. They'll take on 
Louisiana Monroe. That game begins at 1 o'clock right here at the United Supermarkets Arena. Another turnover by the Red Raiders. Jordan Jackson getting in there. He'll score. Doesn't get quite the dunk that he wanted, but Andre Savrasov with a foul call. And Jordan Jackson a chance to extend that lead even more for Texas Rio Grande Valley. Yeah, just uh, lost the ball on one end and can't convert on the inbounds play and at least to a run out. And you see, you know, if you're, if you're Andre Savrasov right there, you've got to ensure if you're going to foul right there, you got to ensure that it's not an and one opportunity. But nice play right there by Jordan Jackson on the run out. Jordan, an 86% free throw shooter. He's got nine. Yeah. This is what Texas Tech was worried about. They figured he'd be very, very motivated. Got into some foul trouble in that game a year ago, but not the case today. And has shot the ball well. Dominic Moretti, a turnover. Levi and Jordan Jackson trying to beat the Red Raiders down the floor. And the ball knocked out of bounds off of Jordan Jackson. So Red Raiders get it back, but another turnover led to that play. Red Raider bench was hollering Wolf as Rob McClain got up behind Chris Clark. He tapped the ball away, but it's out of bounds off of the Vaqueros and remains the Red Raiders' possession. It's an 11-0 run right yeah. now by the Vaqueros. Texas Tech very much out of sorts right now. And, and again, if the game's being played at the pace that the Vaqueros want. Kyler Edwards inside, laid it off, Shannon finishes. And now here's where it'll start. You've got to be able to guard, especially in the half court, if you're Texas Tech. And you see they, they spread you out. It's kind of a four-out, one-in look at times. And it's just a lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball. Try to take away the help opportunities that Texas Tech is so good at. A lot of spacing. Here's Connor Raines. His three comes up short. Ramsey ran it down, saved inbounds to Shannon. Red Raiders trail by six. Davide Moretti, his first shot of the day is an air ball. Wow. Might have hurried that, Chris. Yeah, on the pull up right there. You, want, you know, the other night, it's one of 12 in the first half for Morrow. And he is uh, he's basically coming into this game in the last three, shooting 24% from behind the arc in his last three games. Yeah, really uncharacteristic for a guy who shot the ball so very well a year ago. Yeah, six for 26 now in his last three games, including today, from behind the arc in those last three. And so, again, at some point, he's going to regress to the mean. He's too good of a shooter. This will balance out right now, just in the stretch right now, where it's. And uh, Harris, I'm, I'm looking over here. The trainers are looking at uh, TJ Shannon over here. Texas Tech trainer Mike Neal. Levi with a miss. Red Raiders have numbers as they run. Jamias Ramsey a three on the way. Not there. Tipped over to McCuller. And the Red Raiders have 20 more seconds on the shot clock. And they'll need Terrence Shannon on the injured list. McCuller tried to turn inside, had that ball slapped away, and we've got a timeout in Lubbock. But right now it's UTRGB, the Vaqueros, leading Texas Tech 22-16. You're watching Texas Tech TV here on Fox.
here at the United Supermarkets Arena in Lubbock, Texas, Rio Grande Valley leading the 24th ranked Texas Tech Red Raiders 22-16. Chris, they are on a run. The Vaqueros red hot from the floor. Yeah, seven of their last nine. And a lot of this, John, has been without Leslie Varner on the floor. He's one of their leading scorers. He's been uh, on the bench and just played two minutes in this first half with two personal fouls. Varner, a guy averaging nearly 13 points a ball game, and you're right. The Vaqueros getting the job done without him. Jemai, somebody's got to shoot. Shot clock violation, Red Raiders. After a timeout, that will not please Chris Beard. Yeah, that, that no. Too many pass fakes, too many. At some point, somebody's got to go hunt, hunt a shot right there and get, uh, get an opportunity up. A lot of turnovers here in the early going by the Red Raiders. Seven, six for UT Rio Grande Valley. Rob McLean thought about it in the corner. Reigns back up top, Levi. One of the top defensive players in all of college basketball a year ago. He, like Ramsey, has missed four games this season and would rank right up at the top of the steals category. Only three on the shot clock for the Vaqueros and Javon Levi's three draws nothing. Yeah, he's only made three of those all year. And if you, you force them into a bailout three right there during the shot clock, you've had a good defensive possession. Red Raiders do a good job there. Let's send it over to Taylor Peters for a moment. John and Chris, Coach Beard was not happy with his team in that last timeout. He said, I need to see you play more competitive basketball. And he made a point to talk about Jordan Jackson, said that's a young man that's invested in this game, and we have to come out and respond immediately out of this timeout. Jackson leads all scorers in the game right now with nine. Terrence Shannon has eight for the Red Raiders. He's back on the floor after being checked by Tech trainers on the sideline. Great look by Holyfield and McCuller to finish. It was a great look, as you mentioned. He's uh, playing some good basketball today as TJ Holyfield. That pass by Reigns was just out of the reach of Kevin McCuller, the redshirt freshman from San Antonio, and he'll force UTRGV to call timeout. Yeah, and Texas Tech doing a much better job with the scramble on the defensive end now, getting spaced out, but the help is starting to be there now, and as, as, the, as the ball screens come, or the quick passes, as you swing the ball around to the backside, Texas Tech's starting to rotate, and uh, and it's causes, uh, you know, UT Rio Grande Valley some problems now, and they, uh, they get in the bind and call timeout. So there's a couple of former Red Raiders. Yeah, a couple of guys there who could play some defense, Justin Gray and Zach Smith. <laughs> Both on that uh, Elite Eight team from two years ago. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you something, really, clearly an untimely injury in that Elite Eight year to Keenan Evans, or the Red Raiders, I think, would have been in the Final Four in back-to-back -back years. Well, and you know, I think you win the Big 12 that year. I think, uh, you know, he may have been Big 12 Player of the Year, but, you know, we forget Zach Smith missed a bunch of that season as well yeah. with an injury. And you still got to the elite age, huh? Yeah, I, I just firmly believe that team might have won a national championship. Jordan Jackson, runner, and not certain he may have drawn the charging foul. Jordan comes up, held his arm up as though he was the guilty party. This is going to be Holyfield step in front of him, and clearly outside the arc, Jordan in the air, and he picks up the foul. Yeah, the floater right there, and again, that's why coaches will teach you to go off of two feet. When you go off of two feet, you're in so much more control. When you jump off of that one leg, boy, you, you're very vulnerable in, uh, for a charge. Moving forward, not going straight up. Davide got Anthony Bratton in the air and will draw the foul. And this is where he is at his best. And I think it's it's not near as much perimeter oriented with Davide this year because we, we mentioned to you the shooting struggles he's had recently, but he's in those last three games, 21 and 22 at the stripe in those last three. And he continues uh, that hot streak today at the free throw line. Elite free throw shooter in college basketball is Davide Moretti. He is number one in the nation. Came in 38 of 39, now 40 of 41 on the year. Although I'm going to 
point out one that he missed in that game against DePaul, which I, I thought this game was wrapped up with Davide on the line. And the second shot didn't go, but the Red Raiders have drawn another charge. Holyfield. And the Red Raiders are now in a 6-0 run, and uh, it's gotten to close to four minutes uh, without a field goal for the Vaqueros. And you see the charge right there. That's back-to-back -back possessions where Texas Tech defense at its best. Mark Adams, uh, those those T-shirts they made last year that say charge on them. <laughs> uh, he will be pleased there. Darren Shannon has drawn the most charges on this team, but T.J. Holyfield now has six of those and two in this game. Nice look to Moretti, to Clark, back to Holyfield, who was going in to slam that ball in, but gets fouled. That was about to be a poster. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was uh, a great look. Great ball rotation, and here it comes. Yeah, he got him with the body, but well, that was about to be uh, Holyfield's moment right there. Graduate transfer from Stephen F. Austin. Playing his 112th career game today, he has started every one of those. Both at Stephen F. Austin and here in Lubbock for the Red Raiders. A lot of people wanted him when he decided to transfer away. And the Red Raiders fortunate to get him. One of two for Holyfield. Came down to the Red Raiders and the Jayhawks. So that's one of those. If you didn't get him, you were going to have to face him two or three times a year. And Kansas, not such a good day. No. Jay Wright's Little Nova Wildcats take down the Jayhawks today by one. And that. Uh, one of the last games of the Big 12 uh, Big East Challenge, and I, I gotta tell you, the Big East he kind of handed it to the Big 12 in that challenge over these last couple of weeks. Red Raiders had their moment with Villanova in that Elite Eight season. Kansas, another one, number one to go down. Wow, talk about a number one to go down. <laughs> Aaron Shannon inside. Take a pick on who you want to draw that foul. Plenty of plenty of uh, Vaqueros surrounding the Red Raider. And you got three of them trying to block that shot. And that's why, you know, TJ Shannon leads this team in field goal, I mean, excuse me, free throw attempts with 51 coming into the game just because he does that right there. He attacks the rim. And you know exactly what he's going to do when he gets going downhill. He is coming after you, and you've got a decision to make, and you better be. Uh, very good defensively if you're going to try to you know, stop that from happening get him to the free throw line often is uh, certainly in the game plan. And T.J. Shannon puts the Red Raiders in front by one at 23 22 he'll head to that sideline Kevin McCuller back on for the Red Raiders who have Jamias Ramsey Davide Moretti Tyler Edwards and Chris Clark on the floor. 13 2 run by the Vaqueros a little bit ago. Now it's in the midst of a 9 0 run by the Red Raiders. This is Chris Freeman, who had been out for several games for the Vaqueros with a hip injury. Back today, Javon Levi trying to drive a nudge by Davide Moretti, and his shot is offline. Chris Clark, another board, and the Red Raiders trying to build on a lead. Jamias Ramsey, wow, in and out. Had an open look, had to take it. Get a better look than that. Yeah, boy, they're, they're on the other end here. They're letting uh, Davide Moretti get really physical with Javon Levi. I mean, that's a lot of bumping going on there. That's Coach Hill. I'm surprised. I looked up to see if he would have anything to say, but it's getting between those two. A lot, a lot of bumping out here at the top of the key. Johnson trying to drive on Kevin McCullough and all of the spinning in the lane called for traveling. Yeah, when you spin behind the back, see when you spin, that's when you're in a bind and you've got to have a plan for the basketball. The spin moves in traffic, it's a bit tricky. Some coaches would say that's a low level play as Jemias just cuts right there and Chris Clark throws it. Uh, just to our right <laughs> into the front row and they're not eligible to uh, catch it and shoot Over here. Clark will take a seat TJ Holyfield. Well, no, he'll go to the scorers table. 
McCullough is in. Tyler Edwards, Moretti, Jemias. Aaron Shannon, I guess, quickly off that bench. We'll talk about a shove by Quentin Johnson. Wow. Forearm shove there to try to clear up some space, but the turnover brings a timeout. Red Raiders lead by one. You're watching Texas Tech TV on Fox. TJ, he totally sold that call yeah. right there. I can't hear you over John and Chris. Can he? Um, I just was wondering what when you wanted me to do this TTU connection still, if you want me to do it afterwards with Chase Conk, the athletic director. You can do that here if you want to. You want me to? I mean, that's fine. Okay. She surely will have more free throw opportunities. Okay. That's fine. Is the coach that's doing the halftime interview? Okay, bye. Thank you. Red Raiders on a 7-0 run over the Texas Rio Grande Valley Vaqueros and back in front. And before this game got started, Chris Beard making a presentation. Taylor, tell us about it. Yeah, that's right. There's a few connections between these two teams, but a big one comes between head coach Chris Beard and athletics director for UT Rio Grande Valley, Chase Conk. Conk, of course, took that job there in August, but prior to becoming the athletics director for Rio Grande Valley, he was the vice chancellor and AD for Arkansas Little Rock. He actually hired coach Chris Beard back in April of 2015 to be the head coach there at Little Rock. And that turnaround, his turnaround of that program really put him on the fast track to be here at Texas Tech. But Conk works alongside University President Guy Bailey, who Texas Tech fans will likely know held that same position here at Texas Tech back in 2008. Yeah, a lot of familiarity. And of course, Jordan Jackson, who played here as well before transferring away. So a lot of people familiar with the Red Raiders on both sides. Tyler Edwards couldn't get a three to go. And the Vaqueros trying to find a way to get back in front. Javon Levi shot not there, and the Red Raiders have an opportunity. And Jordan Jackson going to pick up his second foul out front against Tyler Edwards. Yeah, so you've got uh, that, that's now three Vaqueros with a couple of personal fouls and uh, Uche Diavaca, he's got three. So some foul trouble for Coach Hill here in the first half. Already in the double bonus are the Red Raiders who have committed only three fouls themselves. Edwards free throw rattles out. Jordan Jackson will sit down probably for the remainder of this half. One would think he's got nine to lead visitors in scoring today. Edwards getting the second free throw. Red Raiders by two with a bit over three minutes to go in this first half. UTRGB really on offense spreads out the defense. Well, it's been about the nine minute mark the last time that uh, the Vaqueros scored. It's going to continue here. McCuller with a blocked shot. Red Raiders run. T.J. Holyfield thought about a three for a moment. Pull that ball down, and the Red Raiders continue to run their offense. 
Tyler Edwards looked for an opening, wanted that ball to go to Holyfield, but deflected away and stolen. And TJ will pick up a foul coming down the floor, trying to slap that ball away. No, not much of a rhythm to this game. You know, I think the Vaqueros would agree, although they're they're okay with the score being what it is. It's just a matter of uh, a lot, lot of scoring droughts, just not much rhythm right now. And Texas Tech has not made a three in this one yet. 0 for 7 from behind the arc to this point. Boy, it struggled against Southern Miss. Long range in that first half as well. Holyfield's got two fouls now. Both he and Tyler Edwards will sit down. Ramsey, Moretti, Chris Clark, T.J. Shannon, Kevin McCuller for the Red Raiders. Levi using the quickness drive inside, and McCuller comes away with the ball. Here's Shannon. You know where he's headed, and gets knocked off on the way there by Chris Freeman. When, when he makes up his mind, he's got one gear, and you can see him kick it right there. He kicks it into extra gear, and uh, you know, you just if you're Chris Freeman, you have no chance. Uh, to keep up with him. That, it's an elite first step when he decides to take it. Cut off at the pass. And Terrence Shannon at the line. 84% free throw shooter. In fact, the Red Raiders with Davide Moretti leading the Big 12. Terrence Shannon is the is a true freshman. Is number five on that list of best free throw shooters in the Big 12. Chris, we mentioned this the other night against Southern Miss when Red Raider shots from the floor weren't falling. A 24 of 27 performance at the free throw line won that game. Hey, it's offense. I mean, you take it however you can get it. Some nights the ball's not going to go in, but what, you have to have an answer. Connor Raines is going to get a good look from the outside, and he knocks down a three. Uh, he's a green light shooter. That's what he does. 12, 12 of 20. On the season is Mr. Reigns from uh, behind there. He doesn't take a ton of them, but when he, when he chunks it up there, they, they go in. Has started the last five games for UTRGV. Chris Clark off balance shot, not there. Rebounded by Johnson. And Levi leads the charge for the Vaqueros. And he'll get tied up by Moretti, but get the ball away. Reigns has it. Back to Levi. 143 to go in the first half. Reigns hit a three a moment ago and thought about it again. Levi going to try to drive against Moretti. The kick on the baseline. Not there. Levi, the smallest guy on the court, trying to tip it up and in. But it wouldn't go. Here's Chris Clark. Great look. McCuller, though, tried to double clutch. Got his shot blocked. And the Red Raiders come up empty. Kevin McCuller a little off balance right there. Not sure if he knew exactly where he was. And not sure exactly why he brought the ball down. Empty possession there, and he had a runout opportunity. Cross court pass by Levi, but underneath a foul called, I think, on Davide Moretti. He got caught underneath with Sean Ray, a 6'8, 230 pounder, and was trying to prevent the ball from being thrown inside. Yeah, a bit of a mismatch right there from a size standpoint for Davide Moretti. I think he had a little. Uh, Foresight was like, okay, I'm in a bind and uh, try to, you know, unanchor Mr. Ray there. Well, I think Chris Clark just grabbed the jersey of Quentin Johnson as he was trying to get around the pick. It looked like a cornerback on a wide receiver that time. <laughs> Grab onto the jersey and not let him go. Well, and see what, what's what's happened here is that you have 13 personal fouls that have been called on Rio Grande Valley. You have six on Texas Tech. Now it was 13 to four. Now you, you call it as it comes, but is this you know do, do you even it up a little bit? I mean, Co Coach Hill doing a good job of talking to the officials, kind of pointing that out, and you get you get back-to-back -back foul calls on uh, this possession because I'm sure the officials are tired of hearing about it on their end as well. There's Coach Hill right there, former Lon Kruger assistant coach. Done a good job at uh, for the Vaqueros. Lon Kruger, a former coach at what was then Pan American University, now Texas Rio Grande Valley. Pretty well-known guy. Abe Lemons also coached there, as did a guy on that Red Raider bench, Mark Adams. 
was head coach there for five seasons. Here's Terrence Shannon, cross court to Clark, and a pass to Ramsey taken away, and Sean Ray's out there by himself and slams it home. Sean Ray. And Sean Ray was uh, just out there all by himself. Nine other guys ran down the floor, and he waited. The ball came back to him for a dunk that puts UTRGB back on top in this ball game by one. And the Red Raiders have turned it over again. Yeah, and whether McCullough gets hit in the back right there or not, you, you've got to be able to catch that and be strong with the ball and go up. Twelve turnovers against Chris Beard's Red Raiders and a one-point deficit in just under 30 seconds to play. Here before halftime, shot clock is off. The Vaqueros are in no hurry. Although the Red Raiders will try and trap Javon Levi after he gets across midcourt. And Moretti thought that ball had gone out of bounds and would belong to Texas Tech. Tyler Edwards over to help in the double team. Yeah, Javon Levi, he may have been the last one to touch that. Ten seconds on the scoreboard clock. Levi's pass slapped away by Ramsey. Red Raiders have it. Four seconds to go. Tyler Edwards, Terrence Shannon shot on the way. Not there, and Avery Benson can't tip it in. And the Red Raiders are going to trail by one here at halftime to Texas, Rio Grande Valley. Ready to get this second half started in Lubbock. Both teams have their starting lineups back on the floor for UT Rio Grande Valley. It's Connor Raines, Leslie Varner, Javon Levi, Jordan Jackson, and Anthony Bratton. Red Raiders have Tyler Edwards, Jamias Ramsey, TJ Holyfield, Davide Moretti, and Terrence Shannon. UT Rio Grande Valley by one to start this second half, 27-26. Red Raiders have some ground to make up. Javon Levi on the drive. Leaves that ball off to Varner, who uh, set out much of that first half in foul trouble. Cross-court pass. A lot of attention on that far side. Varner shot not there, but Anthony Bratt, great tip. And got the miss back up, blocked by Holyfield. Out of bounds. Ball will belong to... UT Rio Grande Valley. Man, I tell you, Javon Levi can get into the lane and wherever he wants, and he can get those kick out threes for his team pretty much every time down. It's just a matter of Red Raiders knowing who's a shooter and who's not. But Levi does a good job penetrating the lane as they create so much space on the offensive end. UT Rio Grande Valley hit four threes in that first half, and Jamias Ramsey trying to take that ball away from Levi near midcourt, picking up the first foul of this second half. Javon Levi, a guy who led the whack in steals a year ago, was third in the NCAA. Very quick defensively would be up there again in those numbers, but hasn't played in enough games to this point. Jordan Jackson, shot won't go, and the Red Raiders have an opportunity on offense now. Here's Shannon, had 12 in that first half for the Red Raiders. Edwards up top, but the Red Raiders 0 of 8 on threes in that first half. Now five for their last 30, counting that game against Southern Miss. Davide's high off the glass. Runner doesn't go, but Holyfield follows it up. And Davide just slipped out of his shoe there. Trying to adjust that coming back up the court. He's got a. You'd almost like to see him get a touch every time down. You got to get him in the flow of the game. Got to get him going. No question about that for Chris Beard's Red Raiders who are in front by one just underway in the final 20 minutes. Javon Levi hunting a shot on the baseline not going to be there and Anthony Bratton may have gone over the back of Shannon on a rebound attempt and that is his third personal foul. third personal foul and again that's going to be the foul trouble is going to start to mount for coach hill and company and you see every time down though they did with a the switch tj holyfield has ended up on levi take those jumpers if he wants them 
Here's Jemias Ramsey. Kicks it out to Davide. Passed up the three to Ramsey, who did not make one in that first half. Still hasn't gotten a three to go. Holyfield got the rebound and picks up a foul as the Vaqueros try and slap it away. I thought that was going to get called on Varner. They give it to Levi. Vaqueros dodge a bit of a bullet there. That would have been Varner's third. It's Levi's first. Shannon off the inbounds pass. The shot came up way short. Kicked into the hands of Jordan Jackson. He's outnumbered by the Red Raiders, but tripped by Terrence Shannon. Zabade Moretti trying to cut him off, but Shannon just got tangled up. That's why coaches will tell you play at different speeds. He slows down, gets run over. It's hard to guard somebody playing at different speeds, no matter how fast or slow they are. It's just hard when you speed up, slow down. And Ended up picking up a cheap foul right there on uh, Shannon. Jordan had nine to lead UT Rio Grande Valley in the first half, but set for a portion of those first 20 minutes in foul trouble. Connor Reigns, Javon Levi in the corner. Varner. Here's Levi again. You're right. He can get inside with these, but his layup won't fall. Chris Clark got it out quickly. Davide to Ramsey. Lays it in. It's a nice decision right there by Morrow. Could have forced a three right there. Footwork a bit off. Jemias right there on the cut to the basket. That's nice slick basketball right there. Red Raiders by three. Jordan Jackson trying to even the score. His three's not there. And on the rebound, Red Raiders fight inside, but Leslie Varner's going to wind up on the line. Yeah, that's uh, T.J. Holyfield's, I believe, his third personal foul. Yeah, watch, watch the Morrow again. The footwork not quite off. He's got a bit of a contested shot right there. He could have shot fake, let him fly by and taken it, but uh, he'd much rather take the layup. And Jamias Ramsey pays off for you. Leslie Varner makes the first of two for UT Rio Grande Valley, an 83% free throw shooter. Spent way too much of that first half on their bench in foul trouble. It's hard too when you sit basically for an entire half and in a game like this, his team will need him, but it's hard to, to kind of get it back going. Averaging nearly 13 a game, has won that free throw a moment ago, his only point today. Here's Chris Clark in the lane, not there. Jordan Jackson pulls down the miss. Opportunity for Varner on a three, he's not there. He's trying to get himself going as, yeah. we, as we speak. Garner again got it from Levi. The runner's going to go, and we're tied again. Chris, you talk about that, that the Red Raiders have had Chris Beard stressing to them that they are no longer the hunter. They are the hunted in these games. The 31 wins and a trip to the championship game of the NCAA tournament a year ago kind of puts a bullseye on your back. And Beard even this week said, look, we're not a championship team right now. We can get there mentally and physically just not tough enough yet. Well, long way to go. Yeah, and, and I think, again, also the, these games right before the holidays, they're, they're just – they're just kind of not not traps, but you know coaches are leery of it all over the country Whether you're the home or the road team. There's so many things your kids are worried about And again the holidays are a stressful time for everybody No matter if you're playing college basketball or not, but with, with these these young You know 18 to 22 year olds right now and uh, boy just uh, Not in the flow of things today again One of your keys to this game Santa can wait Got to get this one out of the way before worrying about that. Here's Jordan Jackson up top, defended by Chris Clark. Levi so quick inside, got hung up among the big guys. Shannon the block on Bratton. I'm not sure that they didn't get it off in time. Shot clock had reset, but Bratton still can't score, and the Red Raiders have it. Tyler Edwards, Jemias Ramsey. Wow, wow. Uh, that's what you've missed with, with, with Jemias running the floor like he does and able to finish at the rim. It's just, uh, you know, something that this team has been sorely missing is uh, Levi knocks down a perimeter look right there and again, don't want to get him going. 
But boy, I mean, you know, so many things that this team lacked without Jemias in there. But nice to see that back in there. Levi averages 12 a game. Had that one right at the free throw line a moment ago. And Jemias, I think, on the pass to Chris Clark, is going to get charged with a charging call as he let that ball go. But we're all tied in Lubbock. You're watching Texas Tech TV on Fox. This is game two of a five game homestand for the Red Raiders, but they will have to rally to win this one tied at 32 all with UT Rio Grande Valley just over 15 minutes to play. Hey, join us for our next broadcast that comes up next Sunday, December the 29th, as these Red Raiders take on California State University Bakersfield. Broadcast coverage begins at 3. Texas Tech Red Raider basketball right here on Texas Tech TV on Fox. And Chris Beard has gone small right now. He's got Clarence Nadoni in the game, I believe, for the first time today. Looking for some quickness against this UT Rio Grande Valley team. That's Kevin McCuller on Javon Levi. Trying to get McCuller in the air. His off-balance shot will not fall. And Nadoni, the freshman from Paris, France on the rebound. Yeah, it's just a good block. <laughs> you can see that Nadoni wrestling around down there. Now, uh, let's see if the, the young man can help break the press here. Not going to let 6'9 Isaiah Fontaine, uh, Fain, uh, Fontaine reach over him to get that rebound. Red Raiders going to face some pressure. They've not had that much problem getting the ball across the timeline. But doing something with it after that has been an issue. Red Raiders still looking for a three-pointer. Moretti covered up there, couldn't get a shot off. And Chris Clark trying to get a loose ball will pick up a foul from Jordan Jackson. Yeah, that should be his third foul, John. You know, and again, he's just diving for a loose ball right there, trying to make a play. Jordan Jackson need to have to play smart here. Coach Hill going to, it looks like, uh, maybe get him out the next dead ball. Has not scored here in the second half, has nine points, all of them in the first 20 minutes. Great look inside by Shannon. And Chris Clark finishes. Yeah, you come off the dribble handoff and you slip it right there. And great look by TJ Shannon, as you mentioned. Leslie Varner trying to find someone to get the ball to. Isaiah Fontaine. This is Quentin Robinson, a size mismatch on Moretti, but Chris Clark picks him up and shot goes. 
very rare do you see in college basketball the same player guarding the post on one end and then basically bringing the ball up, uh, you know, for his team on the other end, like Chris Clark. <laughs> that's that's very rare. Nice spin move by Kevin McCuller to draw a foul. Redshirt freshman out of San Antonio, Wagner. Came to school, joined this program at semester break a year ago, but was recovering from a leg injury, did not play. Both he and Andre Sabrasov came at midterm a year ago. And you are 8 of 11 from the free throw line, and it may require, you know, uh, a free throw shooting contest here like you had the other night, 24-27 versus Southern Miss, but uh, need to take advantage with these opportunities as the fouls continue to mount for the Vaqueros. One of two for McCuller puts the Red Raiders in front, and now Red Raiders going to pressure in the backcourt. But can they corral Javon Levi? Madoni thought he had knocked it off of Levi out of bounds, but ball remains with the Vaqueros. They'll inbound right in front of the Red Raider bench. Barner gets it in to Uche Diamaka. Barner again, shot not there. Red Raiders are going to come away with it. McCuller. Up court to Davide Moretti, gonna wait. McCuller, though, right inside. Now the Red Raiders get into an offensive set. Clark trying to drive inside. Great on the assist. McCuller, the recipient. Might be the best possession of uh, Texas Tech today in the half court. And I gotta tell you, the energy has really risen with Clarence Sandoli being in the game and guarding Javon Levi. We saw Avery Benson with that kind of energy against number one Louisville Nadolny trying to do it here that shot not good Fontaine the rebound knocked down Nadolny ball is out of bounds UT Rio Grande Valley thinks it's their ball and the officials after a conference say it is Nadolny will sit Tyler Edwards back for Chris Beard I thought Nadolny did a really good job in that spurt of blocking out causing some problems his quickness has certainly uh, caused Javon Levi some issues. He plays tough. The officials want the Vaccaro bench to sit down as they inbound the ball. Here's D.B. Amaka up top. Kevin McCuller on the defense. Stops the drive. Javon Levi underneath may have stepped out of bounds, or did he get fouled? Yeah, I think I think what you're going to see is that on the replay, if we can take a look at it, is you you see I think you slide over. You you watch Terrence Shannon. He kind of slides over a little bit late, trying to take the charge right there. That's good good work from the folks back there, They're able to show us that. That That's ball's going to be stolen by Kevin McCuller on the inbound. Took it away from Sean Ray or Quint uh, Quentin Johnson rather. Drives it inside and picks up a foul. And it's these freshman role players. John stepping up, kind of matching the energy here. And Red Raiders definitely in need of that. Kevin McCuller, Tyler Edwards have something in common. Both of their fathers played in the National Football League. Kevin's dad, a former Red Raider and Green Bay Packer. Really feel a winner with those three personal fouls. And smart. Red Raiders by four. The color will make it five. And take a seat for a moment as Jemias Ramsey returns. This may have been, I mean. It, it, a lot of it won't show up in the box score. It may have been Kevin McCullough's best game as a Red Raider. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. He's got seven, but so much of what he's done hasn't really shown up. A lot of deflections and just very, very active. Quinton Johnson, size advantage on Moretti, going to try and drive him as they clear out, but he can't finish, and Moretti gets the board. Chris Clark opening found T.J. Holyfield coming down the baseline and Holyfield draws a foul. Clark is so good at understanding when I penetrate I know exactly where my cutters are coming from and just uh, making making the game very very easy and putting uh, the Carroll's in a bind while he's doing it. Javon Levi will sit picked up his second foul. It's the seventh team foul in this second half. 
Red Raiders starting to go to the free throw free throw line quite frequently, Chris. And again, I think you're okay with that. Coming into the game, and you may you have made 172 free throws coming into the game. That's exactly the same number that the opponent had attempted coming into this one. 172 makes 172 attempts, but too many uh, half and halves here for the Red Raiders splits right there with the, the free throw makes. Still a six oh, point half. Red Raider advantage now. You've got two of the top five free throw shooters in the Big 12 in Moretti and Shannon. And as a team, you were second best in the league. Jordan Jackson came in for Levi a moment ago trying to find an opening, but Holyfield won't let him find it. Ball tipped by Clark and out of bounds. And we've got a break here in Lubbock at the United Supermarkets Arena. Red Raiders now lead by six. You're watching Texas Tech TV on Fox. Forty thirty four Red Raiders looking for their eighth win of the year ranked twenty fourth in the country but it has been a battle with Texas Rio Grande Valley Red Raiders today Chris have eleven assists in the ball game on fourteen baskets that's one thing the Red Raiders do well find somebody to get the ball to them and score yeah we've certainly seen some of that on display. Say that was on the rim. Or, oh, those are gonna say shot clock. Rob McLean is the guy that went up for UT Rio Grande Valley to try to tip that ball in after the miss, but a shot clock violation and break for the Red Raiders, so that would have narrowed the gap to four. Jamias Ramsey to Davide Moretti. Is this the Red Raiders' first three? And it is. And one of ten from behind the arc uh, for this team, and maybe that'll get this uh, crowd into it. And Mr. Morrill going. Really timely shot by Davide Moretti. Taylor Peters. Right now, Texas Tech is out rebounding UT Rio Grande Valley 27 to 22. But Coach Beard demanded more from his team. He said he has to see them be more aggressive rebounding the basketball. But he also talked about how UT Rio Grande Valley is dangerous right now because they're a team that believes that they can beat Texas Tech here tonight. He said we absolutely have to play more aggressive here in these last 11 minutes. But he also told his team that they need to just do a better job of taking care of the basketball and allow Sparks to catch fire like that play that Davide Moretti just had. 
Davide hit the three and then tied up Quentin Johnson on the defensive end in the possession arrow to the Red Raiders. So a couple of big plays by your junior guard. Yeah, and, and Morrow ensures that you've now made a three in 169 games straight. The last time you didn't make a three, because right, previous to his make, you were 0 for 9 with about 10 minutes to go in this one. Last time 0 for 21 against Loyola on December the 22nd of 2014. Wow. Wow. So. Davide, though, the guy you want at the line at any time. He's the NCAA's active career leader in made free throws. He is almost perfect. Led the NCAA a year ago. And has been big for the Red Raiders, who now lead by 11 over UT Rio Grande Valley. Here's Javon Levi trying to lay it up, and Fontaine finishes. Penetration by Levi pulling the defense there and Fontaine able to ram it home for the Bacaros. Deck by nine, 10 22 to play. Tyler Edwards, three on the way. Look good, and it is. And usually, the way it works when the first one goes in, they start to come in bunches. Push off by DB Amaka. The Red Raiders don't get the call, and in the corner. Quentin Johnson knocks down a three. That's the fifth of the game for Texas Rio Grande Valley. The Red Raiders have two. Both of Tex have come here in the second half. Chris Clark has position inside, going to draw a foul. Javon Levi, they may call this intentional. Coming up over the back, it'll be the third foul on Levi. Uh, Clark came down very awkward right there, straight down. See the did not really try to use the rim to protect the shot. And Levi, after the ball was thrown over the top, big mismatch size wise, there is just trying to go up and block the call, block the shot. Chris has gotten an explanation of the call. Yeah, that's a flagrant one. Uh, Chris Clark is going to shoot two free throws. You're going to get the ball back. I think they just felt like, again, Javon Levi did not make the play on the ball right there. And so uh, this is a big point in this game. And Chris Clark came down straight with his kind of a leg underneath him. So looks to be OK as he knocks down the first one. The officials today are Marquise Pettigrew, Craig Murley, and Jeff Malham. And I appreciate uh, Craig Murley coming over here and giving us an idea of what the call was. Red Raiders at the line today are 16 of 20. Chris Clark will sit for a moment. Edwards, Ramsey, Holyfield, Moretti, and Shannon for the Red Raiders. Here's Jemias from the corner. And it's contagious, Chris. You're right. Yeah, coming in bunches now. That's your third one of the half. And this is the danger zone if you're the Vaqueros right now. They're down 12. Javon Levi, quickness to get into the lane. What happens there? Rob McClain off the front iron, but tipped up and in by 6'4", Quentin Johnson. 53-41. Holyfield's got an open three. Not going to be there. Ramsey waited on the ball. It came right to him, and you know where he's headed and scores. Yeah, he did a good job of his body control hanging in the... Uh, Hanging in the air right there and waiting for contact. Almost got an and one opportunity. DB Amaka's runner not there. Red Raiders have the ball. Davide in no hurry to cross midcourt. You can see Texas Tech run a horn set right here. TJ Holyfield, nice spin move, but he picks up the foul. Rob McLean, the junior from Red Lake, Minnesota. That, that was simply an opportunity to try to feed the post right there. And again, compound the, the, the foul issue for the Vaqueros, and uh, it works. Holyfield to be at the line when we return. Red Raiders 55 41. You're watching Texas Tech TV on Fox.
55-41, Red Raiders under nine minutes remaining in this ball game. Let's take a look now at your Ford League leaders, Chris. Yeah, free throws. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a situation where Texas Tech has gotten really good at this aspect of their game. We, we talked about that a little bit ago. You, you, you've come in and you've made as many as other teams attempted. You've got two of the best free throw shooters in the league and T.J. Shannon and Davide Moretti. And 24-27 the other night. Uh, you're 16 of 20 tonight. It's, it's offense for you on nights when you struggle from the from the perimeter, just can't get it going. It is turning into offense. Uh, but uh, you come in average and make it about 17 a game. So if one of these go in for Mr. Holyfield, you will hit your average uh, with about nine minutes left to go in this one. That's a look at your Ford League leaders. Visit your local Texas Ford dealers today. Ford is the best in Texas. Red Raiders 80% plus in this one as T.J. Holyfield, a senior grad transfer out of Albuquerque for the Red Raiders, tries to extend the margin, and he does. Tech by 16 now over Texas Rio Grande Valley. Javon Levi, great quickness, tried to lay it off. And Sean Ray never got the ball. Jemias Ramsey took it away, and the Red Raiders are back on offense. Here's Davide. Red Raiders are trying to isolate Holyfield inside. It was successful on that previous trip. He picked up a foul. A little more aggressive play today by Holyfield, I think, Chris, than we've seen in a while. Edwards gets a three on the way off the iron. Not good. And D.B. Amaka to clear for Texas Rio Grande Valley. Yeah, you, you'd like to see. I think Chris Clark has really started to do that. You'd like to see T.J. Holyfield. I don't want to call it selfish, but become a little more uh, offensive oriented where he hunts his shot a bit more. Levi inside, not there, but nobody blocking out Quentin Johnson. Quentin Johnson. Red Raiders allow him inside. The freshman from Oklahoma City to tip in that miss. Red Raiders do have the advantage, though, by 14. Under seven and a half minutes to play, and it has been tough the entire way. Chris Clark faced up on Rob McLean inside, down on the baseline. Red Raiders now swing it back up top, have six on the shot clock. Jemias Ramsey trying to create. Oh, left it for Chris Clark. Perfect pass. And Clark scores. That, that, that's Jemias playing the Chris Clark role yeah. right there. They just kind of reverse roles right there, and that's really good at the end of the shot clock. Nice ball movement by the Vaqueros as well. And Sean Ray will wind up at the free throw line when we return. But the Red Raiders have a big advantage at 59-43. You're watching Texas Tech TV here on Fox.
This copyrighted telecast is the property of Learfield IMG College under rights granted by Texas Tech University. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, reproduction, or other dissemination or use of this telecast or any part of it without the expressed written consent of Learfield IMG College is prohibited. And this will be just the fourth uh, free throw for the Vaqueros in this game. Red Raiders have made 18 free throws, and you're right, Chris, the Vaqueros haven't had many opportunities. Yeah, that scored 33-17 uh, here in the second half as uh, Texas Tech over the Vaqueros. And now we have a bit of a yeah, turnover by... Let's see what happened. It's, it's like uh, I think McCuller got the rebound. He either stepped out of bounds or lost the ball. Free throw was missed, but Vaqueros will keep the possession. Leslie Varner has three points in the ball game, but personal fouls kept him on the bench in that first half for much of it. Looking for a shot, but can't find it. 18 on the shot clock. Levi drives, lays it off, and the attempted dunk by Sean Ray is not going to be there, and Texas Tech has the ball back. Levi can get inside, but unable to finish with that high arcing pass to Sean Ray. Here's Kevin McCuller. Leslie Varner is defending Davide Moretti. Now they've switched to D.B. Amaka, but Chris Clark inside. McCuller a tip, but not there. And now the Rio Grande Valley can run. D.B. Amaka is going to draw a foul and maybe a three-point opportunity here. Break right there put uh, David Moretti in a bit of a bind. He was all by himself trying to contain DB Amaka. Gave too much ground. DB Amaka will be at the line. Hasn't had that many opportunities this season. 12th game of the year for. Texas Rio Grande Valley he's only attempted 14 free throws and unable to connect there and in the scramble for the ball Ramsey out of there for the Red Raiders Red Raiders in no hurry up by 13 with just under six minutes to play yeah Chris Beard continues to go with those horn sets right there he's just trying to feed the post right now I think he feels like that uh, the Carroll's can guard it. And, and again, I think if you want to turn it into a free throw contest, he is more than okay with it. This is Kyler Edwards at the line. Edwards missing the first of two, but he's an 86% free throw shooter. Wow, Kyler, I, I think, has missed his last four free throw attempts now. This season started off really well, but has suddenly begun to struggle there. Red Raiders showing zone on this trip by UT Rio Grande Valley. In the corner, three not there, tipped out. And Terrence Shannon able to control it for the Red Raiders. Here's that mismatch you talk about. Chris Clark up top with the ball, gave it to Edwards, and now Jemias. Edwards has one of the threes for the Red Raiders today and steps out of bounds. Wow. Yeah, two missed free throws and then uh, stepping out of bounds. Back-to-back you know, -back -back possessions right there. So Kevin McCullough is going to come in for Mr. Edwards. It's a, just been a grind of a game. Just a grind. I mean, credit to... Uh, the Vaqueros here, and you're up 13, but boy, nothing has come easy in this one. And keep in mind, Texas Rio Grande Valley led at halftime. Quentin Johnson grabbed that ball and fired it up good. Three-pointer, he's got 14. He leads the Vaqueros in scoring. Jordan Jackson on the bench at the moment had nine in the first half, has not scored in the second half. Lead is at 10 now after that three. Davide on the drive. Runner not there. Rebound Terrence Shannon. Lefty puts it up and in. Yeah, you're up 16. 
and uh, the Vaqueros cut it to 10 before you answer there and uh, Chris Beard wants a timeout he's trying to get this uh, get this team to the Christmas holiday on a positive note not real happy in that timeout right there some hard coaching going on Terrence Shannon good thing to be left handed here all of the defenders on his right and he's able to go up and use the rim for some protection but he is left handed. Yeah, and it, it's tricky. It, it's it's interesting watching him shoot jumpers, and defensively, you just you just don't see much of that, and so it just looks awkward. And but there, there's certainly times when this thing pays off. He's got 14 field, for yeah. the Red Raiders. Yeah, don't miss your chance to grab a piece of Texas Tech history by ordering a copy of Raider Power. It's the official insider companion that memorializes the Texas Tech men's basketball 2018-19 season where they started unranked and finished in the national championship game that must read book follows every step of that historic journey. Meantime, Javon Levi just has the Red Raiders step aside and let him go right inside. You can order a copy of that book at ttupress.org. They may leave out that chapter of the try by Levi. But Jemias Ramsey left alone as well and knocks down another three. Yeah, Levi just refused the screen, yeah. uh, you know, previously <laughs> on the other trip down and just wiped it out right there. The seas parted. Kind of hard to tell. He's been out of the lineup with a hamstring injury the way he has played today. Uh, Jemias Ramsey has been really good today. And again, just a much different team, deeper team. Harder to guard team. The bank is open on a Saturday, Mr. Harris. <laughs> I thought by this time of day it might be closed, but DB Amaka gets it in. McCuller, nice look as he gets inside and a three point opportunity for Kevin. Nice pass, gave him the opportunity, and he'll finish after the timeout. Red Raiders by 16. You're watching Tech TV on Fox. Today's game is brought to you by Ford. Visit your best in Texas Ford dealer today and see why Ford is America's best selling brand. Red Raiders trail by one at halftime, but here in the second period, they have outscored the UT Rio Grande Vaqueros by 14, 40 to 26, and have a 66 13 lead with Kevin McCuller headed to the line when we go back to play Chris you mentioned this multiple times it's been a grind for the Red Raiders but they have found a way in this second half to pull away yeah they've, they've continued to get to the free throw line and I think you know the obviously the three started to fall uh, certainly has helped but the, the Carols have come in and play very very hard and uh, have not made it easy on you at all 
forced you into 16 turnovers to this point. You finished with 15 in the game versus the, the same group last year. Kevin McCullers free throw is good. He's got 10 in the game. And the Red Raiders by 14 will apply some pressure as the Bagueros try and get the ball up court. Jordan Jackson back on for Lou Hill's team. And he's got the four personal fouls. Quentin Johnson going to try to drive McCuller inside. His turnaround jumper not there. And Jemias Ramsey couldn't find the ball when it came off the rim, was turning to look for it, and it winds up getting tipped out of bounds. The ball right bounced right behind Jemias Ramsey. He didn't, he didn't know where it was. Great to have him back in the lineup for the Red Raiders, clearly. Here's Chris Clark across the timeline. We'll go back to Shannon. Red Raiders have four three-pointers, all of them in the second half of this game. Tobias picking up where he left off before that hamstring injury. Davide, here's Chris Clark. Great pass to Shannon. His dunk attempt blocked by Sean Ray. And Jordan Jackson out of there for UT Rio Grande Valley. D.B. Amaka inside scoop layup got tipped by Ramsey on the way up and Chris Clark will have the rebound. <laughs> Chris Clark just knocked down <laughs> Kevin McCullough a little friendly fire there. Chris Clark is a strong young man. Yeah had been starting in the absence of Ramsey for those four games but the sixth man off the bench today for Chris Beard. Red Raiders 67 53. Ramsey defended by Javon Levi was trying to drive inside and will pick up a foul against Sean Ray. Ray trying to step over, really trips Jemias. Ramsey back for the first time in a while with 14 points. He was averaging 17.3 at the time of his injury. This is the free throw there, but John, the, the interesting thing about his 14 is 12 of those have come in the second half. Yeah, got really busy after halftime. Five star recruit, one of the top 15 players in the country coming out of high school in Duncanville. Second free throw is good. And with two minutes and 13 seconds to go, Red Raiders lead by 15. Texas Rio Grande Valley can't run a lot of time off that clock. They don't have a lot of time. But Jordan Jackson, his first bucket of the second half is his third three of the game. Here's McCuller to Ramsey. Chris Clark, 140 to go in the ball game. Now you're just going to start running four flat sets and let Jamias Ramsey go to work and see if the Vaqueros can guard it and run ball screens. Quentin Johnson was the defender. Terrence Shannon back to Ramsey. He may shoot this one, and he does. Short. Rebounded by UT Rio Grande Valley's Jamal Gaines, who is in the game now for the first time. 6'8 freshman. Played his high school basketball at AAA Academy and Universal Academy. A couple of, couple of prep schools, but out of Red Oak, Texas. And it won't show up in the stat sheet. There is no telling how many balls that uh, Kevin McCullough has deflected today. Yeah. Just a lot of deflected passes. Been very handsy. Uh, just all around the basketball today. Very aggressive. It'll show up on a board in the Red Raiders locker room. <laughs> but maybe not to the public. But Red Raiders keep a watch on that kind of thing. Tech by 10. Under one minute to go in the ball game. Here's McCullough. Left it for Shannon. Who thought better of going inside at the moment? Although Chris Clark will look, Red Raiders have Davide Moretti set on the baseline. Seven on the shot clock. Fans are thinking Jemias is going to let it fly, and he does. Way out there off the rim. Tell you what, the 10 on the floor right now look a bit tired, Chris. Jordan Jackson dribbled that ball off his leg and got it back. Three on the way, in and out, not good. For Quentin Johnson. Now the Red Raiders are going to get it across midcourt, and 
A group of four who were going to check in will not. Red Raiders are going to win this one by 10 over a very feisty Texas Rio Grande Valley Vaquero squad. Red Raiders get their eighth win of the year and a win streak at home grows to 53. Chris Beard is unbeaten 